Today we're going to get up close and personal and you're going to see inside of my RV and how I organize our homeschool stuff in such a tiny, tiny space. Hey friends, welcome back to Regular Secular Mama. If you're new here, my name is Cassie and I am going into my seventh year of homeschooling my two kids ages 10 and 12 years old. You may have heard the news by now, we are closing on a house this week in like five days <laughs> and I am so excited to get out of my RV. I know that full-time RV living is really big right now and there are YouTubers out there who cover, you know, families in an RV and I thought that it might be fun to maybe go that direction with my channel but I just haven't done that yet. Honestly, it's not my favorite thing. <laughs> it is uh, cramped, uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> I'm not really gonna get into all the reasons why it's not my favorite thing in this video, but I definitely wanted to film this video before we get moved into our house because I wanted you to see how I get the space organized. We live in this RV full time, and so with that comes a lot of challenges, especially when we're homeschooling, and especially when we use a lot of books and things when we're homeschooling. Now, once we do get set up in our house, I'm going to film another video of how we get that space organized and set up, um, partly because I just am really excited to get into my house and I wanted to share that with you guys. You're gonna have to bear with me here a little bit. It's a million degrees and I have my air conditioner turned off because it's really noisy and it's right there and I'm having light ring issues, so the window's open. <laughs> so it's probably gonna get really hot in here. So just, you know, hang tight. Anyway, I thought I would kind of start where we normally do most of our schoolwork and just kind of move around the camper and show you some of the different things that we use and the ways that we, you know, keep things organized. So I'm standing right in front of my dining table. Um, as you can see behind me is like the kitchen space and we've got this amazing island, which I don't know if we would survive without this island, but right across from that is this dining table. So I don't know if you can see that. Here's the dining table and it's got these uh, bench seats. I'm gonna show some B-roll here where you're gonna see how the inside of the bench seats are organized. I've got tons of stuff stored in there. The problem is it's not super easy to get into. So on one side, I've got these Ikea bins that go on the, I think it's called Calax shelving, and they actually fit perfectly in here. So I have three of those. They have all of our science, you know, materials we might need for science labs for the year. They have our, what I call office supplies with pens and binders and things like that. And then the one that my cat won't get off of <laughs> has uh, like games and manipulatives and things that we might pull out for things like math or language arts. And then of course around those, I have used that space to stash things like printer paper, my laminator, um, some extra practice workbooks that we haven't quite you know, started to use yet. Lots of stuff is able to be stored in here, stuff that we don't, you know, need to use every single day or every week, but I can pull out once in a while when I need it. Here on the other side, I have a lot more like creative and fun things stored for them. I have some what I call professional development books. These are some nonfiction um, homeschool or parenting related books that I sometimes turn back to uh, every year. And then I've got some like crafty things for them. I've got paint supplies and beads and ribbons and embroidery things and all kinds of just creative like crafty things. We actually don't get into this bench as often as I would like just because it's such a pain in the butt to take things out and pull the thing apart. That's all the stuff I have kind of stashed away in these benches. Like I said, I don't get into it very often. I really miss having like big bookshelves and cabinets that we could pull things out really easily. So I'm really excited to get back to having things organized that way, but this works for us for now. Now we do spend most of our time here at this table when we homeschool. Uh, we of course eat breakfast here and then we start here in the morning with our read aloud. Usually the kids will wind up, you know, sitting on the couch or playing on the floor while I'm reading aloud and then we get to our schoolwork. My daughter is a little more independent. A lot of her schoolwork she does on her own without me. So for hers, she usually likes to take her stuff into her bed. So she does sit here though when we have like a lesson to do together and she needs some instruction from me. My son spends a lot more time working with me. So we sit together here for a lot of the morning, you know, when we're doing school lessons together. And behind this table, there's this wall space and the slide out. 
This actually happened to perfectly fit this whiteboard I already had. It is two feet by three feet, and this is actually the one I used to have my all about spelling and all about reading um, letter tiles and things on. Now we use the app, which I highly recommend if you are at all worried about space or about keeping this tile thing organized, just get the app. It's worth the $20, seriously. Um, so, but this worked really, really well for this space. And then you can see I've got some of these other things on the wall to remind us of like preposition, parts of speech, um, some, you know, reference things up here when we were doing a lit house study unit. And then I stashed some things kind of in weird places, which you kind of have to do in an RV. I don't know if you can see, but there is a package of posters back here. I think they're like 18 by 24 which we sometimes use for a project or an assignment. I've got a United States map magnet puzzle. I believe I got this at Dollar Tree like two years ago. And so I don't know if they still have it, but this has been really fun for when we do our state research pages for Build Your Library. Then I've got, you know, just a couple more things in here for reference. I've got another map. It's one of those placemat maps from Melissa and Doug. A clipboard. Usually I put things on here that we're memorizing and we do our memory work in the morning. I've got behind here is usually we have our read aloud in here and then if my kids have an independent reader that they want to stash here so they don't lose it, they can, you know, stick their book behind there. These 3M hooks right here are everywhere in my RV. They are amazing, <laughs> as you probably know. I have another type of hook though that is new to me and I will show you that in just a minute because they are a little more sturdy. They don't fall off the wall when you have something a little heavier hanging from them. So I'll show you that in just a minute. Moving over here across from our table, underneath this island, there is this kind of negative space where the island kind of curves out a little bit. These fit perfectly the Ikea rolling carts that I have. I'll just give you a quick rundown on what's on each of these carts. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but obviously things have changed a lot since I last did a what's on my cart video like two years ago in my house. On the top here, this is where my kids turn in any work that they need me to check over or you know save for records. And I usually stash my planner in here when I need the table space. And then of course I've got a bunch of little like office -y supplies in here, tape, paper clips, um, post-it notes, things like that are in here. These are the Build Your Library narration assignments. Emily Cook provides a like a list or a chart of all these different narration assignments that the kids can do. I made them into uh, flashcards so they can kind of shuffle them up and pick one at random to do. Down here on this second shelf, I have mostly all of the teacher materials and teacher books that I need when I go through lessons with the kids. Some things are like stashed in folders. Uh, this is like Michael Clay Thompson printouts for them to practice, even though we haven't done that in a while. <laughs> These are where I keep some like math tests and stuff. So obviously it's getting a little cluttered. It's the end of the school year and I'm just kind of like shoving things in there, but it is what it is. Down below that, I have a little, I don't know if you can see it, like a plastic Rubbermaid type of like food container back here. And that's where I usually put any science materials we need for the current week. These are flashcard boxes, which you may have seen before. We mostly use these for Michael Clay Thompson's vocabulary strands. Up here is just like a pen cup from Ikea that sticks on the side of here with all of my teacher pens and highlighters and things. The kids and husband are not allowed to take anything out of here without asking me. <laughs> Moving on to the next cart I have, these are a ton of different pencil boxes with uh, the kids' different like pencils and markers and things. I've labeled them all. They fit really, really nicely stacked up like this. In fact, I took off the wheels at the bottom of these carts. Number one, the wheels on this one were getting really wonky and I could not find a good replacement for them, not at Ikea. <laughs> and number two, it gives me like an extra three, two or three inches here at the top. So that worked out really nicely to take those wheels off. So they've got like their markers, colored pencils and things, extra dry erase markers when those dry out, things like that. Our all about spelling box lives here because it fits perfectly. <laughs> These are our loop jars. 
you may have seen the other video I posted a couple of weeks ago where I shared how we use like a loop schedule, but you know, in a jar form. Some, you know, basic math facts, practice things. These are those wrap ups that you may be familiar with. Kids like practice their math facts by wrapping the string around to, uh, to the answer. And then the back shows like a key that they have to match up and see if they got it right. So those are really fun. And then just basic flashcards and things for um, when they prefer that. A globe, which is adorable and tiny, and I don't know where the stand is. <laughs> this is really adorable and fun, and I honestly cannot even remember where I got it. I feel like it was one of those things that wound up in somebody's curriculum giveaway box and I grabbed it, but these are like story starters that are really, really funny. They are just these uh, different ideas that you can kind of flip through and create a random story starter idea. Anyway, these have just been a really fun way to get some ideas into them when they want to, uh, to write something. All right, moving on. This shelf down below wound up being a little skinny because of all these books standing up below that, uh, which I'll get to in a second. So I have to keep things laying flat here. Basically, I just put any memory work or poetry books that we have and our timeline. I had this timeline up on the wall in our house and I can't wait to have a hallway again where I can actually put that timeline out for display. But what worked really, really nicely was to take these file folders and hole punch them so they can go right back in the binder when we're not using it on display. This worked really great when we moved from one time period to another and um, I didn't need, you know, all the older years up on the wall anymore because we weren't actively studying that time. So if you're cramped for space, this is a really excellent way to do a timeline where you have the versatility of having it in book form, which there are a lot of, you know, timeline books out there. Uh, there's a really nice one from School Nest that I'll link below that I almost went with that, but I already had this set up and I really liked how we could also put it on the wall when we have some space. Now below that, I have all of our history books. So we use Build Your Library as our main history spine, and we also pull some ideas and resources from River of Voices and from History Quest, which you can see over here. And so these are all of the spines, all of the books and supplemental, supplemental reading that we do. And they just happen to fit really nicely here. The largest books like these are a little bit tight getting them in and out of this shelf. And the really big books have to live over here because they're just not gonna fit on there. Unfortunately, I have one cat who likes to chew on the corners of everything. I don't know if anyone else's cats do that, but it's really not, uh, not fun. The next space in this like main living area that we use for school is under the couch. So I'm gonna turn this around again and open up the front so you can kind of see what it looks like under there. I will warn you though, it's a little bit messy and crazy. All right, so here's the couch. Uh, it's a little scratched up from the cats. Uh, it's a lot scratched up from the cats actually, but it like pulls out into a, a flat like sleeper sofa situation. And over here is our library book basket. This thing is ancient. So if you can find one of these, definitely just pick you up a couple because they last forever. But that's what we take back and forth from the library. Let me move that out of the way. This has like a little door that opens up and there's tons of space under here. This is our microscope that is stored in the styrofoam and everything just to protect it and keep it clean and safe. We have not pulled this out very much since we decided to drop uh, Real Science Odyssey's Biology Level 2, but I'm still glad I have it because it's a lot of fun and I'm excited to have it set up and out on display where we can use it more easily. Pulling it out in and out of the box here is really kind of frustrating and maybe that's why we haven't, you know, wanted to use it very much. I'm not going to pull it out, but behind that are a couple of like open plastic bins that I have materials and things for that. This is also where we keep all of our games. Well, <laughs> not all of our games. We have, I think, three other Rubbermaid totes in a storage unit with our like furniture and stuff. Uh, that we kind of rotate the games out of because yeah there was no way we were gonna fit them all in here missing right here is a tote that i wish i could show you it has straight sides so most of those plastic totes have kind of tapered sides or rounded corners 
That doesn't work very well when you're trying to store things like books or boxes like these games are in. But I found one that I think is actually designed to hold hanging file folders and it's like water resistant or moisture proof. And it has these straight sides and really square corners. So that works amazing for things like this. I'll link that in the description below. Aside from that, we have, you know, some blankets back there and then our printer thankfully fit very nicely down here and there is a plug right over here behind the letterbox and so we have it plugged in here and I print things you know with it just underneath here. I cannot imagine where we would have put a printer if uh, it didn't fit under here so thankfully it fits. Other things in this main space are <laughs> my laundry, sorry about that, uh, these totes that break down they like fold up like a windshield sunblock thing those are amazing. This is a giant inflatable globe. We actually had one exactly like this in our house and our cats, you know, poked a hole in it. So I had to buy a new one, but this thing is huge and, you know, accurate enough for just occasional looking at it to see where something is. One thing that the old one had that this one does not actually have is the ocean currents. So I'm kind of bummed that this one didn't have that. I'll see if I can find the older one that had those currents because um, my son was really intrigued by that for some reason. Uh, but I'll try to link that one below. If not, I'll go ahead and link this one because it's held up really well since I replaced it. Without making you too dizzy, I'm going to turn you around here and show you our computer. We debated whether or not we were going to put a TV in here, which is what it's designed for. But we really wanted to have our desktop computer out and, you know, available to use without taking up any sort of table space and potentially damaging the computer by, I don't know, getting knocked over or something. So we found this really amazing stand or this really amazing mount. This is like a, a regular TV mount. And then this is, I don't know if you can see it. This is a special mount just for an Apple computer or Mac. It's like a really thick, sturdy piece of metal that's coated, and it has this angle to it. I don't know if you can see. It screws into this circle. So it doesn't actually penetrate this stand at all. There are no holes or anything you have to drill into the stand, which I liked. It just kind of screws on around it and then has this uh, lip that goes into the circle and holds it really securely. And I really like the way we have it set up here. It's very sturdy. I don't ever worry about it. This um, telescopes, or not telescopes, but it, it swings out so we can, you know, sit here and watch TV on it or watch Netflix. And I can sit here and edit videos or the kids can work on their typing or whatever they need to do on the computer. So yeah, this is kind of a scary mess with all the wires and things, but luckily it hides most of it when we have this pushed back. Now that I've given you a really thorough tour of our main living space and how we use all these nooks and crannies for homeschool, I'm gonna take you into the kids' room because there are a lot of things in there that help a lot with maximizing our space. Hello, kitty, we're coming in. First thing I'm gonna show you is the very first thing you see when you come into this room. It is the same pocket that I have out here. It's like these hanging file folder pockets and they have these rivets where you can put in like a hanger or a screw or something to hang it up on the wall or they come with hooks that go over the doors so you could have it you know hanging over the door instead up on the wall but we needed as many of these as possible to fit all of my kids student books so we have five going all the way down on the wall here they take up this entire little wall space and here is where I found those hooks that work a lot better than 3M hooks for things that are a little bit heavier. One problem I had is I used the medium size 3M hooks for these and they worked okay, but if the kids started overstuffing these, which they tended to do, uh, they would get a little heavy and then they kept popping off the wall and things would fall down. It was kind of a mess. So I thought, okay, I'll just use those picture hangers that have the little nail that you nail into the wall. The problem with that is these walls are so thin, this is basically like a, like the thickness of a pegboard maybe, and I wasn't sure what was behind it. I know that there's an outlet on the other side. I didn't want to accidentally hammer into any kind of wires or anything. So what I did instead is I found these amazing hooks, and I'll show you what they look like. These hooks are from 3M, and they 
nail into the wall, but very, very shallowly. They had these like, almost like a claw hook on either side of this metal bracket, and they just barely claw into the wall. So they do not go in as far as say, one of those picture hanger hooks would, or the picture hanger nails. These are amazing. And I would highly recommend using something like this if you're worried about going too far into your wall, but you need something really sturdy and that can handle quite a bit of weight. I believe these are rated for 15 pounds each. So with two of these, one of these file folder things can hold 30 pounds. <laughs> Moving on from there, I can't guarantee how clean it's gonna be, <laughs> but let's take a look at the kid's table. Okay, it's not too bad. So the coolest thing about this RV and what really sold it for us was the kids had their own bedroom with a door and everything. And this bed up here has this table underneath it. Technically, we can actually tilt this bed up and there are these little things that you can stick pegs into so the bed will be a little higher up for somebody sitting here. But mostly we just leave it down. This really was an amazing selling feature for this RV though. With additional benches, we have more storage. Now, I don't keep any school stuff in here. I told them this was their room and their space. There were very few things in here I was going to kind of commandeer for homeschool stuff. They have toys in here and just anything that they wanted to keep from their bedrooms is in here. Over on the other side, I don't know if you guys knew this, but my son got turtles for his seventh birthday. So for three years now, he has, you know, kept these turtles and been taking care of them. So it worked out perfectly that their tank that we already had fit exactly where this bench is. I did go in here and I kind of reinforced with some extra wood to make this more sturdy and secure but this is where the turtles live. And then underneath here is a second litter box and all of the like things and accessories that my son needs for his turtles. They all get stashed under there. Just to give you kind of an idea of how this is laid out. Hi, kitty. <laughs> the kids have a wardrobe over here with hanging clothes and some shelves and things for their pants and stuff underneath. They keep all of their books that they want in here, uh, all their reading materials here. These are all sketchbooks and art things. Some more books down here. So as far as homeschool stuff in here, the only space that I told them I was going to use was this wall to hang up their pockets for their school books. And then down here at the bottom are some extra books that are really big that we don't need out there for our lessons right away. Like those DK Smithsonian books. I see the planet one right there. And I know the, the natural world one is in there and things like that. So just extra book overflow. In addition to this one shelf down here, I took this shelf over here for read alouds and readers that we already owned. So that's what's over here. Funny story, when we were looking at this RV and the kids saw this space right here, this shelf was not in there. I actually built that and added that shelf in for more space for books. But this has a like a plug over here and I think a cable outlet. They looked at this and their first thought was, oh great, this looks like a perfect place for books. <laughs> and I just thought that was so funny that that was the first place their mind went to rather than, you know, putting a TV in here, which is what it was meant for. So I just thought that was pretty funny. The last space that I kind of took over for school was back here. I put our Ikea paper organizer. This is the one that fits on their Calyx shelf. So it has different little pull out drawer shelf things for different papers. Uh, so we keep our lined paper, graph paper, extra like printed things that I didn't need anymore that have space on the back to draw. And then over here, this is one of those Ikea hanging cup things. I cannot remember the name of it, but I will link it down below. But definitely that has been a huge help having things hung up on the wall. Another space that this is actually really, really nice for is in the bathroom. This is hanging up over the sink in the bathroom and each of us has a cup for all of our like toothpaste and toothbrushes and things like that. So that has been really nice in there as well. So a little bonus tip for you. That's really everything I could think of to show you in our RV that has anything to do with homeschooling. A quick note about storage units. We do have a storage unit where we kept maybe half of our furniture and things like dishes and sewing machine and things that we wanted to keep because we knew we were buying a house, but we couldn't obviously put it in an RV. So I was able to utilize that space a little bit when I had things to rotate out. 
I have a one of those large plastic crates that you would have hanging files in and that is full of curriculum that we have already finished that we had in the RV or that I knew that we were going to be using pretty soon and I wanted to have accessible in the storage unit. Other than that and some books that we finished reading and I just kind of threw into storage, there is nothing else that I can access in the storage unit. It's all packed away completely. Another tip is to utilize digital resources whenever possible. You have already seen by now that we use Notion and I use that for detailed lesson plans and a very detailed book database. <laughs> and I also use that for keeping records for things we need to show for our portfolio. If you live in a state where you have to show some sort of records or things that you did, you might wanna use some sort of digital tool or way to store that stuff on the computer. Then you don't have to have that stuff laying around in your space. Another thing I used a lot that I wasn't sure I was going to actually like was a lot of um, PDF files for teacher books. I already had the teacher PDF for biology level two. I knew that I probably wasn't going to need the paper book for that and I was right. I only referred to it a couple of times uh, per lesson. I didn't need it out all the time so that was one that helped a lot with saving space. I also managed to get the Matthew C. teacher books for my kids' levels as PDF files, and that helped a lot. I wasn't sure how much I was going to use those PDF files because I always use the paper books, but those worked really well to have them on the computer. I hope you enjoy getting a nice tour of my RV and seeing how we use it and how we homeschool in such a teeny tiny space. If you did, be sure to comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And you might wanna hit the bell to be notified when I post another video because coming up very soon, we'll be setting up in our house and I'm gonna film a video on how we get set up in our new homeschool space. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you next time. Bye.